All right, welcome to A Midsummer Night's Dream by William Shakespeare. This is for 10th grade world literature for our appearances and trickery unit. And we'll be looking at a couple of things for uh, William Shakespeare for his background information and background into the story and a little bit on problem solving. All right, start out with an activator before you read. I want you to think about, has there ever been a time when um, your desires conflicted with those of your parents? <laughs> I know this has never happened because you're the perfect child and uh, you always go along with everything that your parents say. Uh, I don't say that facetiously at all. But perhaps maybe you had uh, conflicting desires with those of your parents. Um, perhaps you liked someone who did not like you back. Oh my gosh! People! All right, we are going with Midsummer Night's Dream by William Shakespeare. This is our uh, Shakespeare text for our main text for the Appearances and Trickery Unit. Um, we'll be spending two weeks over this material. So looking at before we read, um, I want you to think about, has there ever been a time when your desires conflicted with those of your parents? I'm sure this has never happened to you because you are a perfect child and you always do everything your parents say, always, 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 and you never desire anything different than what they want especially during your teenage years. Um, but some of you may have, you uh, unperfect children, may have possibly uh, experienced this. Um, perhaps you liked someone who did not like you back. Uh, or perhaps you had a misunderstanding with your best friend. My misunderstanding, I want to say, with my best friend um, in high school, my biggest misunderstanding was over a boy. We both liked. <laughs> so that kind of feeds into both of those at the bottom. But you can think within your own life about times that um, these scenarios have, have popped up and um, you've been faced with situations that with your parents or with your friends that um, were not ideal. And uh, this is a universal thing, especially during um, your teenage years. And Shakespeare knew this, and that's why he used it as his material for this wonderful, wonderful comedy. And... You get all of these wonderful scenarios, but at the same time, you get a fairy who falls in love with a donkey, which is just plain silly. <laughs> so that also makes it quite an interesting story and fun. Okay. Now, Midsummer Night's Dream uh, was written by William Shakespeare. There he is. It is a comedy, and it was written in England in 1600. Now, you also have this information from... Um, your beautiful places today. So make sure you mark your map for England. And it was written in exactly 1600. That's not a roundabout number, that's an exact number. And we know um, Shakespeare's dates of his plays from his performances, because they were performed. He was very famous. Now you're going to uh, record all of this information on your study guide sheet, the top the genre being comedy, the author William Shakespeare, so forth. Okay. Now, although it was written in England in 1600, it was set in ancient Greece. And uh, we already have a nice background of ancient Greece uh, from our first unit on the epic and from your ninth grade year. You should have had a lot of background information of the gods and goddesses, and that will come in use uh, here with your source information. Okay, so Shakespeare based his characters on Theseus and Hippolyta. That's Greek mythology. We talked about uh, Daedalus and Icarus and the um, great architect in his uh, labyrinth with the Minotaur. You had Theseus. Oh, excuse me. I, I apologize. That was Perseus. Oh, bad reference. I have to edit that out. <laughs> Theseus was the national hero of Athens. Excuse me. No, it is Theseus. I'm getting my heroes mixed up. He slayed the Minotaur. And you have uh, Hippolyta, queen of the Amazons. This was a whole race of warrior women. So there they are there looking very warrior-like. Actually, in the middle, she looks very much like uh, Wonder Woman in that picture. She is the queen of the Amazons. 
But they had a great battle, and Hippolyta uh, was taken prisoner by Theseus because Theseus won. And he decided that since he won, he was going to just marry her. So they get married. And as the play opens, they are planning their wedding feast. How they're going to get married. Okay. All right, when you think about Shakespeare, it's really good with this particular play to think about problem solving and the steps of problem solving. Um, we're going to look, use the seven system plan that they use. I actually borrowed this from uh, JRTC. They use this in JRTC and uh, to identify your problem and then solve it. So you have a nice seven step process and you are either going to develop your own graphic organizer or you can use the one that I've put on your study guide for you. So if you have a graphic organizer on your study guide, you're using that one. And if not, you are creating your own. But these steps must be on there. You must first identify the problem, then gather information, develop the solutions, and then compare them, select the one that you want, make a plan, and then implement the plan. Now as you do this, the problem you're going to have is that your parents do not approve of your boyfriend or girlfriend. Now you may have experienced this in real life and you can pull from real life experience or you may have never experienced this in real life because your parents either have always approved of your boyfriend and girlfriend or you've never had a boyfriend or girlfriend or mm, you maybe had a boyfriend or girlfriend but you just never told your parents about it <laughs> possibly but you might not have faced this situation you might have faced this situation you might have faced this situation multiple times but regardless, you're going to come up with a hypothetical pretend situation and you're going to see how you're going to solve this problem. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do, and here's looking at the, um, the graphic organizer that I would uh, consider. This one with these little, I like this because it has little arrows that come down, seven steps. So you're going to identify the problem. The problem, number one at the top, should be your parents do not approve of your boyfriend or girlfriend. So you can go ahead and write that at the top. If you're creating your own graphic organizer, you can skip over this section and come on and create your own. Now as you create your own, you can do a flow chart, you can do a bubbles, whatever you like. I particularly like bubbles myself, but whatever you prefer. So you can go ahead and stop the presentation now and take about hmm, maybe about five to ten minutes to uh, go ahead and come up with the steps down here, the things that you would do. So after you've copied in your problem at the top, you can come down and what information do you need? That would be number two. What solutions can you come up with? Try to come up with at least two. Compare them. Select the one you want, then decide how you're going to implement the plan that you make. Okay. Okay, when you're done, y'all can talk about some of your solutions if you want to share them. Things that you found were you how you fixed it. I will tell you a lot of possible ones. If you're coming back into the presentation now. Um, a couple of possible ones that I've had students come up with in the past. They have uh, hid it from their parents. <laughs> Just saw their boyfriend and girlfriend secretly on the sly, um, which they said was a very good option, but sometimes other people disagreed and said it didn't work out. <laughs> or um, some interesting ones I've heard are they invited their girlfriend to dinner and met the parents and they all sat down and had a good talk about it and that worked out and so forth so whatever you come up with rather interesting but the reason why I did this is because I really want to look at the um, this problem solution situation in Midsummer Night's Dream 
you have these four lovers, Hermia, Helena, Demetrius, and Lysander. And they are all mixed up in love. They all have the wrong love, so forth. And as they are uh, fighting with one another and so forth, you have parents that come into the situation, Aegeus, you have, he takes it to the higher authority, which is Theseus, the governor, the um, duke, the leader of the city. So think about these problems that they're having as you read and how they're going to solve them. Okay. So enjoy reading Act 1 of Midsummer Night's Dream. I hope that you um, have some time to act it out or enjoy reading it within the class itself. And you can go ahead and stop. I'll come at the end and go ahead and summarize. Okay, at the end you have, uh, just to summarize the lesson for today, you have your four lovers, Helena, who loves Demetrius, Hermia, who loves Lysander, Lysander, who loves Hermia, and Demetrius, who loves Hermia. Nobody loves Helena. Poor Helena. Everybody loves Hermia. She's all left out. Aegeus gives her uh, his daughter Hermia three options because he wants her to marry Demetrius. So he says, or gives her two options. He says, you can either marry the man that I think you should marry, Demetrius, or you are going to have to die. And Theseus puts another little thing on there and says, well, if you don't want to die, you can become a nun, or you should just marry Demetrius. So she has a couple of options. Um, Unfortunately, she doesn't like either of those options. I shouldn't say unfortunately. Fortunately for our, our mixed up love story, because otherwise we wouldn't have them. Her, uh, the man that she does love, Lysander, says, uh, what you should do is just run away with me. And we should go get married secretly, uh, which is what she chooses. Which is much better than marrying the man she doesn't love, or dying, or becoming a nun. But we'll see what happens to them as they get together. Okay. And here is your ticket out the door. What genre is a Midsummer Night's Dream? Who are the main characters and who are they in love with? You can just create, um, just put their four names down and draw arrows between them is the easiest way to do it. And you have a conflict when you have these, these silly, rude mechanicals, these actors who are very, very, very bad actors, uh, very, very terrible actors, but they think that they are, you know, decent, especially bottom but they have a problem and the problem is that um, the leader of the band Peter Quince needs to assign all the parts but bottom wants to play everybody he says oh let me play the lion oh let me play Bisbee he's assigned Pyramus but he wants to play everybody because he thinks he's the greatest actor in the world so how does um, Quince solve this problem use your graphic organizer that you created to Make that seven step process. Okay. And that concludes today's lesson.